Hey everyone, my name is Regina and today I'm going to show you version 2 of how to use Asana as your actions tracker. Um, this is going to be a slightly more challenging version of setting up Asana to track not only your actions but also agreements and actions that you've made with the rest of your team. Um, if you have not checked out the first video that shows you the easy bare bones version that you can get off the ground and running um, without too much setup, make sure you go check that one out first um, so that you can kind of see the pros and cons between that version as well as this version. So if you've already done that, let's jump right into it. As you can see here, I've got um, this profile pulled up and as you can see it's over here on this side uh, column where uh, projects are typically stored. Now, if you're coming from the previous video, then you'll remember that the easy version is this My Tasks page that Asana automatically creates for you. Um, we already talked a little bit about the limited functionality there, and so I'd really like to just go straight into the profiles to show you what we've done to make it uh, much better. Um, so the first thing, as you can see, is that there's just a, a ton more detail here. Um, you can not only see the task and the due date, but I've also um, added in some custom columns. So first I'll start with the columns. I've added here this waiting column. And so if I hover over here, you'll see that only actions that others are waiting for should go into Asana. Um, and the reason for this is because as you start adding in more and more and more stuff that nobody else is checking in, that can make your Asana go really crazy. So at least with our internal Mashari method team, we ask that you limit the number of personal uh, admin items or personal GTD things um, that you put in Asana so that we can use this primarily as an actions tracker. Now, that being said, we certainly have had times where there are things that we make agreements on in the middle of meetings and we like put them in here, but it's mostly a personal request. So for example, here under Matt's profile, he's got a task here uh, that we agreed on from our meeting yesterday. And this is a personal task. So Matt is the one waiting on him to do this task. But for the most part, as you can see, a lot of these are agreements that we have made together in the course of a meeting. Um, so everything here, these are all of Matt's action items, and he agreed with me during a meeting or with me and Trisha or with Case um, that he would do these tasks. That's really important because, again, when you make an agreement to do something, you want to make sure that you're following up with the other teammate so that there are no balls that are being dropped. And you also want to um, close the loop if there's uh, some kind of issue that's come up for whatever reason, you want to be able to tell that person, hey, I wasn't able to get to this for this, this, and this reason. It also makes oversight a lot easier. So for example, if I'm waiting on a task from somebody else, I can simply go to their profile and see what they've been up to. And instead of being nagging all the time and asking for updates, I can just go to their task tracker and see. So that's what this waiting for column is here. It's basically, who did I make this agreement with? Um, there's also this column here for assignee. Um, because this is Matt's profile, he's the one that's assigned this task. Um, you don't necessarily need this column because it's implied that anything that belongs in this profile is a task that is assigned to Matt. But I like to have it here because if, for example, I add a task here and it's not there, I might forget to add Matt as the assigned person. So I like to keep it here just to visualize it. Um, I also just have a larger, um, monitor and so I have more real estate to work with. You can personalize it however you want. If you're on a smaller 13 inch MacBook, for example, you might resize the columns that way, um, just whatever you need to fit your needs. So that's the assignee column, that's the waiting column. We've already talked about due date, which is pretty straightforward. And this last column here is really an accountability um, enforcer. So it's called not done. And the not done column essentially uh, at the end of a two week sprint, you wanna make sure that you're getting all of your tasks done. So for example, under Matt's profile, I've got it currently toggled so that it's only showing incomplete tasks, but I'm gonna go ahead and do all tasks. So you can see here under this sprint, the one that went till December 7th of this year, uh, these are the things that Matt's gotten done uh, that he's made agreements with other people on the team for. And there are these three things that have marked, been marked as not done and regrettable. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hide these again, um, just so I can show you how we use this not done column. 
Um, when something is done, done, you want to make sure that you're flagging it either as not done and regrettable, which means, man, I really wish I had done this task. Um, in which case you'll just make a duplicate of this task and bump it to your next sprint. Um, or you mark not done and not regrettable, which means maybe something came up, something changed, you no longer need to do it. It's not as urgent. There are a variety of reasons, but in a nutshell, that basically means that it doesn't get pushed forward to the next sprint. So I'm going to live show you guys how to use this column. So as you can see here, uh, Matt had a task. It, the due date has passed, the sprint is over, and it's been marked as not done and regrettable. So under details, I'm going to come here and add a description and say, ran out of time. Next time, I will intentionally carve out time in my calendar to make this happen. Great. So now what we can do is click the three dots and we click duplicate task. I like to go all the way to the front and just get rid of that duplicate of, and then I make sure that the assignee is still the same. I don't carry over the due date because we're gonna set a new due date for this task, and I go ahead and create it. And so while that's creating in the background, you can kind of see down here that it's populating this new event, and it's done, there it is, um, and it's right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and toggle this so it's empty, and I'm gonna drag this to the next two week sprint, and so that way, at this point, we can set a new due date, and I'm going to set this as due on the 20th because that's the end of the sprint. It is not really an urgent or important task. Or what I can do is because it's going to be a really simple email format to send out, I can set the due date to today. And then finally, the last step is to check this off. So now you don't have a bunch of outstanding tasks that haven't been checked off and stuff. Everything is checked off, but it's very clear here if I go back to all tasks, what has been done and what hasn't been done. Um, if we end up deleting a bunch of tasks uh, instead of marking the column or just dragging things over, then it kind of looks like the person has done everything that they've been assigned, which is you know, not necessarily true. And so this is just a really clean way of getting to know what the hit rate is, how much are you getting done. I can also scroll down to previous sprints. I don't know if, uh, yeah, here are a couple of, of other examples. So there are a couple things here that Matt um, didn't get done. And so we just bumped it over to the next sprint, but it's really clear here that, uh, we marked it as not done. Um, and I can also show you a, another example on my profile. Um, I definitely don't finish everything every single time. Um, and so let's go ahead and toggle this to all tasks and you'll see that as I scroll, here's an example of something that was not done and is regrettable. So we bumped it to the next sprint over here. So upload MM class number four, there should be another task up here, upload MM class number four, and there it is. Um, and then in this case right here, there's a task that's been marked not done and not regrettable. And if I click in, there should be details. So over here it says, closing this out um, because of this reason. And so in that case, it's not done, not regrettable because there's no further action items there. So that's how you would use the not done column. Hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys to understand um, the setup that we have here. You can also go ahead and add in more columns if you need to. So at one point I was testing out what it would be to have tags. And so it's actually better visualized on my profile because I was the main one testing this out. Um, and so if I go here and I toggle tags, you can kind of see, oh, this is how Regina used her time. That's super helpful for an energy audit. I can go ahead and also link in the description, uh, the, the link to Matt's write-up on an energy audit. But in a nutshell, it shows you what you're using your time on. And the I knew, for example, that I wanted to be spending more of my time working on coaching related tasks versus admin tasks. So if I scroll all the way down to the very first sprint, you'll see a lot of this is turquoise marked as admin, which is not great. Um, and my goal was to get as much stuff so that it would start being around coaching and hiring and media um, and much less focused on admin. So that's kind of fun uh, as an energy audit, but not super necessary when rolling out org wide unless you want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and hide that one again. Um, and oh, there's one more thing I want to show you guys under customize with fields. You can go ahead and add extra fields. You can add custom fields. There's a lot of functionality you can have, um, on here. 
Um, the only thing I think Customize doesn't allow you to do is to make automations according to your new um, custom fields. So for example, with tags, I would love it if I could make some automations, which we'll talk about in a second, around, you know, if something is tagged this, then automatically move it to this section. Unfortunately, there is a limitation on the automations that Asana allows you to do within the app itself. I think there are some integrations you can do with Zapier potentially, um, but I haven't looked too much into that just because I haven't really needed it so far. So that's all of uh, the content covering columns. And then we're going to talk about sections here. And I think sections are really important because if you go ahead and click into the first version of the task tracker that Asana provides you, they come up with these limited sort of... Um, sections that are by default. Um, but you can see here, I've got several sections configured so that it's super clean. So first one is zapped from other projects and we'll come back to that one, but there are these lightning bolts here. Those are just representing automations that you can make so that a task will automatically pipe to another project or uh, when somebody has marked the task as completed, it does something to the task on your page. There are a lot of rules that you can set up that make this whole process a lot more seamless and less painful. Um, so we'll come back to that one, but let's uh, put a bookmark there um, and we'll jump straight to Regina's profile. So this section right here is in case there are team members who wanna know more about me or what I've been up to, they can go ahead and click in here. So magic questions, there's another write up on that as well in Matt's curriculum. Um, in a nutshell, we fill out this list of questions um, about how we're feeling about our work life, about personal life, and the whole point here is to create connection. And so I can fill it out one time here, um, and then we'll come back to this in a second as well, but you can pipe it into many different projects. So I fill it out in one place and it automatically populates across all of the other projects where I wanted to show up. So that's that section profile. If I want to make edit every week or update um, the team on what I'm up to, I can just come here into my profile section and update there. And then over here, there's a section called things to update. And these are just reminders for me. So for example, giving feedback, I need to make sure that I fill out feedback forms for everybody um, so that I let them know how I think they're doing and so on and so forth. There's also writing out issues. And so if I've got anything on my mind and I would like to write a rapid or an issue proposed solution, more um, about Matt's write-ups in uh, the curriculum, which again, I will link all of these resources below. Um, I can go ahead and remember that there's this prompt to tell me to write issues. And then these two sections here, good things and actions towards goals. Again, these are more updates so that uh, they pipe into other projects that I have here, which I guess I can show you guys. We have a lot of different projects, um, a lot of meeting docs, which is the third version of using Asana. So we'll get to that in a little bit in my next video. Um, but as you can see, this is a really centralized, nice place to make all edits. And the best part of sections is everything is super clear on what we're updating, where we're piping things to, and um, it's, it's in a logical manner. So things to update. And then we finally get into the sprints here. So as you can see, this is our most recent sprint. These are the things I have to get done before the December 21st, on or before. Um, and I have it toggled so that it's showing only the incomplete tasks. But if I toggle all tasks, you can kind of see all the things and I've sorted mine. You can sort by clicking here or by clicking on any of these columns that you want to sort by. So you can see there are many things I've already checked off um, my plate uh, and there are also things that I haven't done yet. So <laughs> um, that's for this section. I also have my next section prepared so that if there are uh, tasks that I can add for my next sprint that I have to look forward to, I can go ahead and add them there. Um, just a really quick note on calling these sprints. I know that sprint is usually an engineer focused um, term, but I like to think of my projects and my tasks fitting into sprints as well, because what I find uh, is that even that just simple shift in terminology makes me think much more product oriented and much more uh, project oriented rather than just upkeep and doing things for the sake of doing things. I want to make sure that all of my actions are oriented around shipping things that will actually move the needle forward for the company. So that's why I call them sprints, if you're wondering. So I've got my next sprint set up here. And then in case there are things that 
um, I said I wanted to do um, for future sprints. I just have this catch all future tasks. And as those sprints come up, I can move them in um, because I do want to get them done. But it's just so far ahead in the future. So th those are my sections so far. Now we're going to get into the accountability section of the profile. As you can see, this is already much more robust. And so there's a lot more functionality uh, you have with having sections and creating a custom profile. Um, so we're going to get into the waiting for section. This is super interesting because as you can see, all of the assignees here are not me, but I'm the one who's waiting for all these tasks. This is huge. Every time I make an agreement with someone, uh, let's let's talk about, for example, this one right here. Uh, Matt agreed to a task, which I can see here during a one on one that we had. Again, this is like the third iteration of Asana, like the hard version. I'll teach you guys how to run meetings in Asana, which is like game changing. Uh, it's just a, a lot of setup but it's a one-time cost and it's amazing. So I know from this task that we made an agreement, Matt and I made an agreement during our one-on-one -on -one to do this task. You can see here that it lives in Matt's profile. So this is something he has to do and then get this, it's also in my profile under a waiting for section. So I'm the one waiting for this. And so if I see here that Matt's got tasks, which he did, <laughs> that were not done, I can go ahead and go, hey, what's going on? Why hasn't this been done yet? Is there something that you're missing? Are you blocked somewhere? And I can do this across the board. So I know what other people have promised me. And you know, all of my tasks here, I try to pipe them into their waiting for section so that they also have accountability and they can go, hey, Regina, are you okay? Like, do you, are you blocked somewhere? Can I help you? And that's huge because now I have oversight on all the things people have promised me and they have oversight on all the things I've promised them. So the waiting for section is huge. You can also see I've got this rule here, which again, we're gonna come back to rules, but in a nutshell, anytime somebody marks off that they've completed that task, it bumps it into this section here called completed waiting for. And so I uh, never have this crowded with things that um, people have already completed. So as you can see, lots and lots of deliverables, people have been keeping their word and doing what they say they're going to do. And that just gives me peace of mind to know that the things that I need to get done are getting done and the things that other people need to get done are getting done. So that's the waiting for section, huge. Um, and then we're gonna keep going on to someday maybe. These are things that I think would be nice to do, but I don't know if I'm gonna do them or they're not time sensitive. And this section someday maybe is different from future tasks because future tasks, these are definitely things I know I want to do. Whereas someday maybe it doesn't kill me if um, I do them or not. So that's there uh, as another section. And then habits, this is an interesting one. Um, oftentimes, when we're in conversations uh, during one-on-one -on -one meetings or team meetings, at the very end of our meeting, we'll go through feedback where we're required to give very honest and open feedback to one another. There's another write-up called feedback, which I will link again. Um, but the, the summary version of feedback is you tell somebody what you like about their um, their behavior or their work ethic or, or whatever, what you like about the, the work that they do uh, at the company and wish that's, which is a really important part, are things you wish were different, right? I wish that you, Matt, were going to tell me if you were going to change your mind on something five million times. <laughs> hey, that's a uh, an example of a wish that. And so anytime we commit to feedback, like if somebody gives us feedback and we accept that feedback, we want to turn that into an action. Oftentimes what I found is a lot of these uh, wish thoughts are actually habits. So for example, under habits uh, here, let's see here, right here. So I actually have to add Matt is here. So I will express when I'm in fear or anger and ask for a timeout. This is something that Matt said he wished I would do. And I said, yes, I will do that. And so now it's a habit here. So as I'm going through my profile, I can see the things that people are asking from me. Now, 
Most of these are Matt's because I work so closely with him and he's always just a big provider and believer in feedback. Um, but you might have uh, other habits that you've agreed to with other people on your team. And so if I go into Matt's section, for example, with habits, um, there's two from me that I've asked him to do. So I've asked Matt to be okay with me expressing them in fear and anger and don't have a solution yet. So he needs, so he said, okay, I'll be okay. If you come to me and you say I'm in fear or anger and I don't have a solution. Right. Um, and another one is if I perceive him to be in fear, he promises that he will pause so he can come here and say, okay, these are the things that are important to Regina when I interact with her. And maybe they're important across the board with when I interact with the rest of the team as well. And there are some other ones that Matt agreed to with Case and some other people on the team. And so this really helps us become the best versions of ourselves, how we show up with specific team members, how we show up with our whole team, how we show up with the company, and how we show up with ourselves. Um, so that's habits. Uh, and then the rest of these are archives. So as you can see, I've added these cute little filing cabinets to the top of um, the, the section headers. And I just keep them there so that if I want to know, um, or if Matt wants to know, for example, as my direct manager, um, what Regina has been up to, has she been slacking, what's her hit rate, how often is she getting things done, he can come here and look at those at any time. And as you can see, these sections are collapsible, which is really nice because it saves real estate. And if you want it to show up a certain way, like let's say I really like this format where my current sprint is expanded, my future tasks is expanded, my waiting fors are expanded, someday maybe I'd like to toggle closed, and then habits are expanded, I can just click on these three dots and save layout as default. So every time I show up here on this page, it's going to show up this way, which is awesome. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about regarding uh, a single specific profile is rules. Rules, I think, is part of an Asana Pro subscription. Um, so you do need a paid account for this, but it, it saves you so much time that I think it's worth it. Um, so if I go over here and I look at this rule, you can see there's a rule section that's called move from uncategorized to two week sprint. One of the limited functionalities that Asana has is they don't have a two week sprint generator, right? There's no way for uh, Asana to know what dates are. This is just all text, they're all strings. Um, and so I have to manually create them each time. Well, that's kind of problematic if I want these tasks to show up every single time in a section. So my hack for this is to have this section up here called zapped from other projects so if i'm making agreements with other people then over anytime anything shows up here it'll zap over to my most recent sprint that's huge because let's say it's january 10th 2022 all i have to do instead of like rearranging my entire profile all i have to do is come here and change this so that it's the new sprint and then hit save that's it it's, it becomes much easier than to, um, yeah, make edits that way and, and to make sure that tasks are showing up in the right section. So rules are a big game changer. As you can tell, I'm a huge fan of them. Um, these rules are, or the automations are already baked into Asana's product. Again, I haven't done a ton of exploration on whether you can do even more with uh, Zapier, although my guess is that you probably can, um, mostly because it seems like Zapier plugs into everything, right? And so under waiting, for example, I have another rule that says whenever there's a task in waiting for and the task is marked complete, then it just automatically moves to my completed section. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then outside of even section rules, we have rules that live within the profile. So I'm going to click over here under customize. There's this section called four rules, and I've got these rules that live within the project. So anytime there's a due date approaching the day before, it's going to add a comment that says, hey, don't forget that this task is due for you. And that's huge because sometimes people just forget, right? They just forget that something is due or they forget that a deadline is approaching. And so this is a friendly nudge. You can also connect it to Slack so that it uh, direct messages someone to DM somebody to remind them, hey, if you've done this, please check it off. Or if you're not going to do it, please write why, mark it not done and move it to your next sprint. 
So that, again, it's another accountability section. I've got one for overdue tasks. So if a task is overdue, it'll comment it and, and prompt the user to do something about it. Um, and then let's see, move from uncategorized to uh, two week sprint. That's another rule again that lives in the sections and then waiting for that's the section. So these two are comment rules and these two are move tasks around rules. Um, and there's so much more you can do, of course, with all these customizations, but it, this is the basic functionality that I've been able to implement relatively easily. Um, into this profile. So if I compare this and the little extra heavy lifting I need to create a profile versus my tasks, which feels much less organized and there's not really a rhyme or reason to it, I would 100% go for the profile. That's the one I think most people are able to buy into. Here's another really huge pro of using custom built profiles versus relying on the task uh, tracker that Asana automatically gives you, you can actually save a profile into a template and apply that template across the board to other people. So again, with tasks here, if I create my sections, I would have to manually create sections for every single teammate. And not only that, I would have to actively request each person to give me access to your page. That's a big pain in the butt. But here under template profile, I've got my sections configured. And as you can see, this is a little, little bit less robust of a version compared to my profile here. But if I wanted to roll out changes, um, all I would have to do is edit this. And then you can see here, there's this button click that you can click here called use template and you apply it to a new project and boom, within two seconds, you've spun up a whole new profile. Um, and the only things you have to go in and do at that point are manually add the roles, which you can have an EA help you do, or you can have the direct manager do it if you're a smaller team. Um, but that's a lot less heavy lifting. That'll probably take you two minutes total versus having to configure an entire profile from scratch every time and to memorize it and to make sure it's done properly every single time. So every person on this team, we all use our custom built profiles. Matt's got his, I've got mine, Trish has hers, and I can come in and see what people have been up to um, and, and you can personalize it from there. So for example, with Trisha, um, one thing that she requested from me was to uh, tell her the importance of each task so she would know how to manage her time a little better. So I come in and I make sure to add um, the level of importance. That's really helpful, helpful for an EA to know. So that way, if she feels really tight on time, she just knows, oh, okay, I can prioritize this thing that's marked as a three versus this thing that's marked as a one. Um, it, it helps with prioritization. But you can see for the rest of the components, assignee, waiting for, due date, not done, those all still live there. Um, and I have really good visibility and oversight in what everyone is doing. And uh, I've color coded them. So these are all pink. And then I've got um, these other team meetings, which we'll get into in the third version. As I mentioned, I will teach you guys how to run team meetings in Asana as well. And the power that um, it holds when you're running team meetings in the same tool that you're running your actions tracker, your accountability tracker in. So hopefully that was a good overview. It's a really long overview and pretty in-depth explanation on why we use profiles, but I hope you learned something and let me know if any of this resonated with you or if you would do anything differently. I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.